Sales Manager in the Life Department at Financial Brokerage, and I'll be your host for today's webinar. Financial Brokerage is the home for the independent producer, providing fixed annuity, life, long-term care, and disability insurance for agents nationwide. Today's webinar topic is Get Referrals Without Begging or Pushing. Bill Cates is widely recognized as a financial services foremost expert in how to build a thriving referral-based business. His books, Get More Referrals Now and Don't Keep Me a Secret, have revolutionized the way many financial professionals are acquiring more and better clients through referrals and other relationship marketing strategies. Bill is the president of Referral Coach International and the creator of the Referral Advantage Program and the Referral Champion System. Bill's referral system has been featured in such publications as Success Magazine, Entrepreneur Magazine, Selling Power, and The Wall Street Journal. And his own business, Success, has been featured in Money Magazine. Thousands of financial professionals are using Bill's referral system to build their practices with quality referrals. You can also expect to receive powerful and practical strategies that will have an immediate impact on your business. Welcome, Bill. Hey, thank you very much, Justin. I appreciate it. Appreciate the opportunity to be here with everybody and got a lot to cover. We're going to jump right in. If you have any questions, we're going to try to take them as you go. If we can, just type them into the uh, little question area there and Justin will be monitoring and they'll stop me in mid-sentence and, and tell me we got a question. So I want to make this interactive and before I go any further, I want to give you my email address because I really am here to help you as best I can. If you have a question that comes up, you know, an hour from now or a day or a week or a month, whatever, just just send it on and I'll do my best to help you out. It's uh, Bill Cates, not Bill Gates, we wish, but Bill Cates at referralcoach.com, Bill Cates at referralcoach.com. All right, so getting referrals without begging or pushing, is there a way to approach clients for referrals without as I like to say, looking like an over-aggressive life insurance agent. Now, don't get me wrong, I think life insurance is a very, 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 very important. Um, but you know what I'm talking about. The old methodologies, the old schools, very forceful methodologies. You don't want to look like that. Uh, the problem is most, pe most people err too far on the other side and don't do anything at all. So what I want to do is give you kind of a happy medium. So rather than look like we're begging, we come from a place of strength and confidence and rather and you know, pushing people to feel uncomfortable, where we're going to be a little softer. So um, you know, I, this is the first of uh, four programs I'm going to be doing for financial brokerage. Um, first one today: get referrals without begging or pushing. And the next one to be scheduled is uh, turning referrals into appointments. So we're going to take uh, 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 pick up from where we left off with this one, and turning referrals into introductions, turning introductions into appointments, because. You know, let's let's face it. Referrals is not really the end game. Referrals is the means to an end. Uh, we know that everything works better when we work from referrals. But there's, uh, you know, how you go for appointments, how you contact people based on referrals is a little different than what you might do from other methodologies. So we're going to cover that. Number three, we're going to cover get you know getting referrals from CPAs and other centers of influence, particularly CPAs. Most advisors want more referrals from CPAs. Very few people uh, have been able to make that happen in a, in a continual uh, you know, way that feels really good. So we're gonna we're gonna tackle that one, and then uh, the last one will be maximizing your event marketing and target marketing, um, two different types of marketing strategies uh, that can work hand in hand. So that's that's what's coming. But today we're gonna work on uh, number one, getting referrals without begging and pushing. And the place we're gonna start is your thinking, is your mindset, uh, your belief system around referrals. I found that most advisors have a belief system that inhibits their ability to get as many referrals as they'd like. So let's start there and let's see if you have the right beliefs necessary and the belief system mindset necessary to really do very well with referrals and make it happen. So for instance, you have a refer referral mindset if your belief is I meet my prospects the way they want to meet me. Right? How does your next great client want to meet you? Well, the, the good news is we don't have to guess on this because Russ Allen Prince has actually studied this um, he studied how affluent individuals want to meet their financial professionals. And you know, you won't be surprised by the statistics. He found that 84% of the folks that you want to meet want to meet you from referral. And 16% will meet you through other methodologies, through seminars, mailing programs, leads, et cetera, et cetera. So you know, the question I have for you is, is, is at least 84% of your client acquisition energy, activity, budget, schedule, um, based on how people want to meet you, 
towards the referral. It's a recommendation from someone else they already trust, be it a center of influence or uh, one of your clients. And so, you know, are you dabbling in referrals or have you made a commitment to the referral process? And you know what I'm talking about. You know whether you're dabbling in this or you know if you've made a commitment to it. Um, some of you on this call perhaps really have made a commitment and you just want to fine tune what you're doing and that's great. Uh, some of you perhaps are dabbling a little bit and you know you need to be a little bit more proactive here and that's all we're talking about. It's just raising your level of proactivity a little bit in a way that uh, that's going to fit, fit your culture of what you're trying to do with your, with your clients, etc. You have a referral mindset if you think in terms of the lifetime value of your clients and leveraging the lifetime value of your clients. In other words, you work really hard to serve your clients, and I hope. I hope you work hard to serve them and keep them and, and deliver a, a great level of service, have a client service model that you follow and that determines how often and for what reasons you stay in touch with your clients. And, and if you're doing that and you have happy clients, then you need to think in terms of the lifetime value, which is not just the business they can do with you over a lifetime. It's also who they can introduce you to over a lifetime. And, you know, that's – many people don't think in, in those terms. They don't think about, oh, my client, you know, can do this X number of dollars of business with me per year. But what about who they can introduce me to? Now, not every one of your clients, of course, is going to give you, um, you know, lots of referrals. But most of your clients have the capacity to, to deliver some referrals your way, and, and we've got to think in terms of that. If we don't believe that's possible, then, then we'll, we're going to miss the opportunity that's in front of us. Um, you know, having a process for generating referrals. Uh, most people don't have a process. I'm going to give you one here today, and we'll continue th with the process throughout the other webinars that we do. But having a process, uh, and like I said, I'll give you a very specific way to approach clients' referrals today. Having a process is, is kind of like playing pool or billiards. If you've played the game, you know what I'm talking about. You've got the cue ball, the four ball, the side pocket. You're aiming the cue ball to hit the four ball in the side pocket trying to make the shot. But you're also trying to do something else. You're also trying to set up the next shot, aren't you? You want to leave the cue ball in position, the seven ball in the corner pocket. One shot leads to the next. I believe that needs to be our attitude towards client acquisition. I know it's my attitude towards, towards that and a lot of people I work with. We bring a prospect into our world. We bring value to them. We serve them well. We turn them into a client if it's a win-win situation. But if we don't have a process to leverage that into introductions to others, then where is the next great client going to come from? You know, wishing and hoping, not a good plan. For some people, we have to turn their wishbone around referrals into a backbone. And uh, so having a, a process in place is what happens is the trust of one leads to the acceptance by many. So when one person trusts us, other people in their lives will, will accept us into their lives. Referrals are borrowed trust. We borrow the trust in one relationship long enough to earn our own trust in that new relationship. So having a process, and we'll get to that too. Uh, I believe that approaching clients' referrals is a safe thing to do versus a risky thing to do. Do you believe that approaching clients' referrals is safe? Or risky, and whatever you believe will will be your reality. I mean, if you believe it's risky, and many advisors do, then guess what? Not only will you not enter into that conversation, you're even going to miss the opportunity. Your awareness will be shut down to the possibility that's in front of you if you believe it's risky. On the other hand, if we can flip the switch and you can believe it's actually a safe thing to do, then guess what? You have opportunities, and you're going to see those opportunities. And I'm going to give you the tools to step into those opportunities in a safe, uh, appropriate way. Let's see, there we go. Uh, I, I, I leave this one blank. I always have a lot of fun with this um, when I'm doing a live presentation. You know, I'll ask the audience, you know, what, what goes here for you? I blank to get referrals, and invariably somebody says, I love to get referrals, and, and then someone says, I need to get referrals, I work to get referrals, and someone who's listening will say, I give to get referrals, right, because giving referrals will, will get referrals. Um, and then I'll usually ask everybody in the group, you know, how about this when I forget to get referrals? And then I usually get a lot of guilty laughter. I'm going to give you a little technique a little later in this call that's going to, it'll take forgetting off the table. If you do this little thing I teach you, then you'll never, for, you know, you'll never forget again. Now, you may not do it every time, and you shouldn't do it every time, but you, at least you won't forget about it. It's going to build that awareness. Um, but the word I like to put in here is the word expect. I, I expect to get referrals. Now, I, I don't recommend you say this to your clients. Do not say to your clients, I expect you to give me referrals. You know, as you know, that's kind of that old aggressive methodology that we don't want to fall prey to. But 
it is an attitude of confident awareness that we bring to the table. We, we believe in the work we do. Um, we, we bring that confidence knowing we help individuals and families and et cetera. And then um, we, we bring the awareness to, 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 to leverage that. We bring the awareness of the referral opportunities that come to play in that. And uh, you know, think of a, an Olympic diver before he or she dives off the diving board. Gets to the edge of the board, looks down, closes her eyes. What are they doing? Well, they're visualizing, right? They're visualizing the perfect dive. They're expecting the perfect dive. I think I think you would agree with me that going into every situation expecting a certain outcome increases the chances of that outcome happening. It doesn't guarantee it, but increases the chances because we come into that situation with confident awareness. So, is that your attitude around referrals? Do you have a referral mindset? Have you made a commitment? To, to building your business based on how people want to meet you. You believe that, that you can do this in a safe way, in a way that fits your, yourself, your clientele, et cetera. So without the right belief system in place, then, then like I said, you'll miss the opportunity. You won't even look at the, the, the strategies to step into that opportunity. So it really starts with your mindset. And, and as you go through these programs with me and as you try to implement some of the things I talk about, now, if you get stuck, you got to look at your belief. What do you believe about this situation uh, that is, uh, you know, not allowing you to act in a way that we know works? The, these strategies work. I've been teaching this for 17 years. Um, you know, I've got probably over 50,000 people using these strategies. We know they work when you work them. Uh, the people that have a belief system that gets in their way, then they don't work them, and then they miss the opportunity, obviously. So that's a referral mindset. Let's talk a little bit about your referability. Before we get proactive with referrals, we've got to make sure that you're indeed referable. In fact, the more referable you become, then, then the more referrals you get without asking. In fact, that's a barometer of your referability. Are you getting referrals without asking for them? If you're not, then there's something missing. And in, in, in the initial relationships you build and the value you bring and the relationships you build over time, and you know, as I talk about referrals, I, I, I'm not just talking about asking for referrals. That, that is definitely a component. We will talk about that today. But what I'm talking about generally is, is building a culture of referrals, a way you think, a mindset. It's also your clients understanding the value of introducing you to other people, how, how they benefit, how their, their friends benefit, not just how you benefit from this. And, and they understand how to talk about you and they understand how to talk about what you do with other folks. And, and it just becomes this culture of giving referrals and getting referrals. And, and a big component of that, of course, is, is the incredible service that you provide to your clients. So I mentioned just a, a minute ago about having a client service model um, that, that determines how often and for what reason you stay in, in touch with your clients. Um, I like the word promise, actually. When you're talking to pr prospective clients or you're talking to centers of influence and you're describing the work you do, think in terms of the word promise. You, know, you could say, hey, hey, George, let me tell you a little bit about our client service model. Or let me tell you a little bit about our client service plan. Well, that, that's good. There's nothing wrong with that. But what if you say, let me tell you a little bit about our client service promise. I think you can hear in that word promise is the word commitment. And so it has a, a more emotional component to it, which, which brings it more, more power. And let me tell you a little bit about Al Fox. In fact, I just got off the phone with Al this morning. Al is in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Last year, Al brought in a little more than $68 million of net new assets, all through referrals, all through the strategies. I've been working with Al for eight years. He's got almost $500 million under management. And he has built a thriving referral-based business. Well, he had a referral prospect in his office I don't know, six, seven months ago, and he was describing his client service promise. And he says, you know, here's how we're going to stay in touch. Here's, you know, what we're going to be doing and how often, et cetera. And about halfway through, he said his client, his prospects uh, jaw dropped. He says, wait a second, Al, this is the way you've been staying in touch with my friend Rick for the last five years. And Al said, yeah, this is, this is what we do. This is our client service promise. He says, you know, Al, I think the only time I ever talk to my advisor is when I call him. Two weeks later, became a client of Al's and brought $3 million into Al's practice. So could you imagine there was, a, was an advisor out there with a client with $3 million, and the only time they talked was when the client calls the advisor? What's going on there? Well, it's called a reactive practice. Right? Do you have a reactive practice or a proactive practice? And you know exactly what I'm talking about. I gave a speech yesterday in San Antonio 
um, to a room full of independent advisors, most of them in business for 20 years, 25 years. And you know what? Only a handful out of almost 30, 35 people had a client service model in place that they actually followed. And you know what's happened there? You're not, they're not fully referable. In fact, they're not even have full loyalty with their clients. Uh, there's probably a gap between what those clients would like with them. And I guarantee once you start to implement this. Now, one thing I want to tell you, I just finished, or just about finished reading a book by a guy named Rob Knapp, K-N-A-P-P, -P, called Supernova. Some of you may be familiar with it. Boy, if, if it, you know, this doesn't fit every practice, but if you're at the place in your career where you want to pare down your practice a little bit and focus on affluent, wealthy individuals and, and serve the heck out of them and, and then use that for a staging point for growth, uh, it's, it's a great book, Supernova by Rob Knapp. So, you know, what goes into this, this, this client service promise? Well, certainly there, there's value, right? We've got to keep adding value. If we don't keep adding value, then we're no longer necessary. All right, so how do you add value? Well, you have your, your annual reviews or semi-annual reviews. In some cases, maybe even more frequently than that, some in person, some on the phone. That's good. That brings value. But these days, particularly with, with your A clients, I'm talking mostly about your A clients, the ones you want more like and the ones you don't, can't afford to lose, then you've got to have more touches than just your reviews. All right, so you say, well, I got an, I got an electronic newsletter. I got an, e an email newsletter I send out to everybody once a month. Do you know the open rate of your newsletter? Do you know what percentage of your clients actually open the newsletter? And this is a very telling statistic because there was a time several years ago where the average uh, open rate for a newsletter was about 25%, about a quarter of the people actually open newsletters that they got that they subscribe to or were sent to them by their advisors. Now the average open rate is down to 9 to 11 percent. So let's say you're doing well. Let's say you're a superstar. You got 30 percent of your clients opening your newsletter, right? That's almost unheard of these days. But let's say you've got that. Well, that means there's 70 percent that you're not staying in touch with like you think you are. So we've got to find some other ways. And particularly with your A clients, a lot of advisors are tapping into what I call themed phone calls, value-oriented phone calls. They're quick phone calls, uh, you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes at the most to remind clients about certain things. Some of them are tied to specific times of the year, like funding their, you know, their IRA to the max and, and things like that. But uh, some of them are evergreen. And I, I've written a report that I'd be happy to send to you. Um, all you got to do is, in fact, there's a couple reports that I've written that will go into more detail than I have time for in this webinar and uh, give my email address a couple times and all you got to do is write financial brokerage reports just in the subject line you can get it started right now you know put financial brokerage reports in it Bill Cates and the first one uh, to Bill Cates at referralcoach.com and the first one I'm going to send out to you will be 25 different value oriented themed phone calls you can make to your clients uh, to, to keep bring in that value. You can do one a month. You can do one every other month. You can say to your A clients, this month we're talking to our clients about this. You know, and you, you're, you're their financial advisors. If it, has, if it has a dollar sign attached to it, you can be a resource for them. You're not trying to sell them anything. But what happens, of course, is you're in touch with them in a value-oriented way. Um, it, it builds the, the loyalty, builds the referability. And sometimes some nice conversations come. And, you know, you, you learn about some things. You learn about assets you didn't know about before. You learn about a change in their family structure or whatever, and, and boom, now you have an opportunity to help them, sometimes even write some business with them. So um, i I just give you one quick example. My financial advisor, Larry Briskin, once gave me a call. He said, Bill, I want to talk to you about your homeowner's insurance. And I said, wait a second, Larry, you don't sell homeowner's insurance? He said, of course not. This isn't a sales call. I'm your financial advisor. I want to make sure you're making the right decisions. Who are you with again? Stay Farm, yeah. When's the last time you did a review? Well. I've been in the house for seven years. I haven't done a review yet. Well, you know, you're being underserved by your agent, and and I know you got some new furniture. Let's let's make sure we get that 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 review done. And you got a, an alarm put in six months ago. Have you at least called them for the for the discount? And I haven't done that either. Well, let's 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 do that as well. So that's like a seven minute phone call. Here here's the value I got from that phone call. Obviously, the surface level value is that that I'm going to make a couple of good decisions with my homeowners, but more than that is I saw that Larry was thinking about me even when I wasn't thinking about him, right? He, he was thinking about me when I wasn't thinking about him. And he was bringing value, not a sales call, a value call. 
And so, you know, if you want those themes, just send that, uh, that email to BillCatesReferralCoach.com. Now, that's one part of the, the, uh, the, the client service plan. And the other part is building business friendships. Now, I suspect that, that pretty much everybody in, the, in this webinar has uh, created business friendships. You, you know, you, you've hit it off with a client. You have a sim similar sense of humor or attitude towards politics or community service or faith or sports or anything, right? You hit it off and then, you know, something develops from that. You play some golf, you go to lunch every now and then, whatever. And that's great. And what I'm talking about is, is, is formalizing that a little bit more, being a little more proactive, uh, trying to build these business friendships as much as you can. Because here's what happens. Building friend, business friendships with your clients, breaking bread in their home, uh, getting together in ways that have nothing to do with the, with the, the core financial work that you do creates incredible loyalty. It creates incredible referability. It, it, this is what shields your clients against the competition and, and, and makes for opportunities for introductions along the way. So I think I have a slide there. Yeah, okay. I want to talk about a few different things around building um, business friendships. First of all, client appreciation events. Not a new idea. I hope you're doing them. And I have a few thoughts around client appreciation events. Here, first of all, here's why they're powerful. First of all, you have a chance to build a business friendship with these folks and, and, and hang out with them in a non-business way. And you, you, I'm sure you know the value of that. But there's also something else going on. There's a, a principle or a theory in psychology called consistency theory. And without boring you with the details of what it means, essentially is what it means to your business is that when your clients who like you and trust you get together with other clients who like you and trust you, what happens at the end? They all like you and trust you more, right? It just reinforces, keeps them consistent with the feeling that they had coming into the event. And this is why it's great for client appreciation events to have some guests sometimes, to have centers of influence who may not be clients, but they see how you relate to your clients and vice versa. Very powerful thing. Client appreciation events in my book should be small. Generally speaking, 99% of the events that you do should be small events because the purpose of an event is for connection. You're trying to connect with these guests, your, your clients and their guests perhaps. And the larger the event, the thinner the connections, the smaller the event, the better the connections. I know some advisors like to have a signature event once a year. They have a holiday party or a summer picnic. I know an advisor in Dallas that goes to the racetrack every year with his clients. Fine, have a big event if you want, but you're really going to get the most bang for your buck with these smaller events. And when I mean small, you know, dinner, eight to ten people, that's how many people will fit around the table. A round table, not a rectangular table. We're thinking in terms of connections here, right? Sporting event. How many people are you going to connect to the sporting event? Well, if you're sitting in the stands, two, one to the right, one to the left. Uh, unless maybe you're doing some tailgating before or after the event because right, we're thinking in terms of connections. Obviously, if you have a skybox luxury suite, then you'll connect with more. So we've got to always think in terms of connections. And smaller events are obviously easier to organize. Uh, it's not such a daunting task to do it. You get into a formula. And then you'll see the results of your labor. You see the fruits of your labor much more quickly and, 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 and clearly when you do small events. Now, I want to drop down a little bit where you see it's in bold. It says retirement parties or celebration events. Many advisors are having a lot of success now with celebration events, and here's what it basically is. This is not a client appreciation event. Well, maybe it's a, appreciating one client, right? You're celebrating something in the client's life, but other people are gathering to help with that. So maybe you have a client who's retiring, and you say, hey, let's celebrate your retirement. Why don't you invite some of your colleagues at work? Well, you know, we'll have a nice, nice big lunch together, right? 10, 12 people, you know, we'll have a good lunch and celebrate your retirement. Um, or it could be a wedding anniversary. Why don't you get some of the couples that are close to you? We'll go out to dinner and we'll celebrate your wedding anniversary. You know, let's get up to like eight, ten people. Or um, you know, a birthday. Hey, what if I what, next week's your birthday? Let's make it birthday week. I'll take you to lunch one day. You know, invite some of your colleagues from work. So any variations on this? And and the brilliance of this, you know, to 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 grow through client acquisition, you have to keep meeting new people. Well, with with celebration events. You're meeting new people in the context of celebration, right? You, this is not a bring a friend event so much as a celebration event. Now, the net result, though, of course, is the people that come see the kind of relationship you have with your client and they have with their advisor, and they want that. 
they want a piece of that. They would like that for themselves. Joe DeSena does this. Joe is in uh, uh, Long Island. He's done this for a while. He does retirement parties. He gets the client to invite 40 people. And you know, the, everybody being invited sees that the advisor is doing this event. It's not the spouse. It's not a neighbor. It's not a friend or a colleague at work. It's the advisor. And so the client comes in and puts his arm around Joe and says, you know, I wouldn't be retiring right now if it weren't for Joe and the great work he's done for me. And, uh, you know, not only has he been a great advisor, but as you can see through, you know, this event, he's been a great friend. And that's when it starts. That's when Joe starts hearing, Psst, Joe, come here. You have a card? I'd love to talk to you about our situation. Our advisor, Cheapskate, never do anything like this. And Joe, Joe's minimum investable assets are $500,000. Uh, per client, and he gets seven new clients every time he does an event like this. So it clearly pays for itself many times over. And the last one um, I just want to focus on for a second. This is so simple, and this is something that you can you can work with your staff. You have staff to help them with this as well. And that is just pay attention to what your clients are saying to you over the phone or in person and see if there's a way you can act on that. For instance, you're talking to a client. How's the family? Oh, we're doing okay. You know, my mom's going in for hip surgery in a couple of weeks, so we're a little anxious about that. Well, what hospital is she using? Oh, my Forest Glen. Oh, great. You know, uh, good good place. You know, what's the date of the surgery? Da da da. Okay. So, what do you do with that piece of information? Do you put a reminder in Outlook that pops up in two weeks, and you call your client? How'd your mom's surgery go? Yeah. What would a friend do? Right. Do what a friend would do. You know, I know some clients that, by the way, some advisors that when their clients come to their office, they like to walk their clients out to the client's car just to get out of the building, just to get out of the, the business environment into more of a personal environment and the, the tenor of the conversation changes. It always changes. And that, that builds business friendships. Let's say I have a client going on a vacation. Can you or a staff member find a couple of websites or a blog related to that vacation? It costs you nothing but a couple of minutes. And it, what does it do? It demonstrates your care. It demonstrates you're paying attention. Right? Uh, let me tell you about Scott Miller. Scott Miller is a guy who's been to my boot camps and and he, uh, you know, he's looking for a wow factor. He's always looking for a way to uh, to wow his clients. He says, and and he told me a story that happened a while ago. He had a client, he's got a birthday coming up on Friday. He says, you know, your birthday's Friday. What are you doing to celebrate? Client says, oh, we're going across town to Shea Expensive. We go there every year. And Scott says, that's a great place. I know it well. So you're going Friday on your birthday? Yep, 7:30 or 8. Okay, great. Have a great dinner. Gets off the phone, calls the restaurant, orders a bottle of wine to be sitting at the table when the clients arrive. If your clients don't drink, you can have flowers sitting at the table. Right? Bottle of wine sitting there with a note from Scott. Scott's at home 9.30 that evening, gets a call from the client couple. Apparently they consumed that bottle of wine and they were calling Scott to say thank you for making a special evening. So teach your staff to do this too. Pay attention to the, all the little things that clients talk about and see if there's a little follow-up you can do with that. Can you, can you demonstrate that you are paying attention, that you care, and you want to build a business friendship? And your clients want this from you. If you don't think your clients want a business friendship, you know, think again. Most of them do. You become confidants to your clients. You know, they tell you stuff they don't tell anybody else. They tell you stuff you don't even want to hear sometimes. I was working with an advisor, a guy named Doug, and he used to have a paper newsletter. You remember when we used to mail paper newsletters to clients? In fact, some advisors are going back to that because it stands out a little bit more than the email. And uh, in his newsletter was a section about uh, him, himself and his family and his kids and vacation and pets and all that stuff, a little section in the newsletter. And he decided to take that out. He decided he wanted to make it more value-oriented and took it out. And when he sent out the newsletter, the, the phone started ringing. He says, you know, clients were saying, Doug, where's, where's that part about your family? It's the only part we read. Um, you know, you, your clients do want to get to know you. You want your personality to come into your practice through this, through building business friendships. So just don't forget, if, uh, if we have any questions, you can, you can stop me as, as I take a breath. It doesn't happen very often. <laughs> um, all right, promoting referrals. Let's get proactive now. We, you know, if I could summarize my system into two, two steps or two, uh, two concepts, it would be be more referable, keep working on your referability, and be more proactive. Right? Do some ways, do some things to, to nudge the process a little bit. So promoting referrals. These are things you can say early in the relationship, throughout the relationship. Not, not getting obnoxious with it, but you can, you know, there's things you can do throughout. And what happens is you nurture the relationship with, with great value, with business friendship, and then it bears fruit down, down the road. And sometimes some of these things I'm about to give you can actually turn into referrals right on the spot. I, you know, teaching this for 17 years, I've gotten you know, hundreds of clients advisors like yourself tell me they plant seeds and you know they didn't have to go any further the client thought of someone that they could refer to them 
So it happens all the time. So you probably already heard this one. I've been teaching this for a long time. Uh, Don't keep me a secret. It's the title of my latest book. Uh, it's a very simple thing. It goes into your client's unconscious, and then later they're having a conversation with friends, family, colleagues, and they're talking personal finance. They think of you because you're their advisor, and boom, don't keep me a secret comes into play, and they make a connection. Sometimes this can turn into referrals right on the spot. Let me tell you about Mark Williams. Mark Williams is an advisor in Dallas. I don't have a photo of Mark, so I drew a likeness. Uh, Mark had his client in his office, says, you know, I'm still taking on new clients. Please don't keep me a secret. The client thought of his mother who had just sold her home. She was downsizing. She had $800,000 in cash. He brings her in, starts to develop a financial plan, discovered she had $4 million with a wirehouse. That money has been transferred over as well. Mark Williams got a $4.8 million client just by saying, don't keep me a secret to the son. So I don't know about you, but I try this a few times. First of all, it's not going to hurt a relationship. They're not going to say, oh, I can't believe you said that. I'm moving my money. No, the worst thing you'll hear if you say, don't keep me a secret, is sure, we'll keep you in mind. Now you can say, don't keep me a secret. If you're part of a team or you have a partner, don't keep us a secret. Don't keep the important work we do for others a secret. A lot of variations on this. I've seen some people put this on their signature file for their email. A lot of ways you can use don't keep me a secret. I know some advisors who really have adopted this as kind of a kind of a slogan, their own personal slogan, and they say it to their clients a lot. And, they're, and you know, they're leaving an appointment, they turn around, the client goes, "I know, I know, don't keep you a secret." And and there's a smile to that. There's a lot of fun. Uh, never too busy to see if I can be a resource for your friends, family, or colleagues, or never too busy to see if I can be a resource for other people you care about. Um, by the way, I have another report on this one that's going to give you some verbiage around this. So this is part of the reports that I'll follow up with if you send me that email I mentioned earlier. If anybody just joined us, uh, send me an email, billcates at referralcoach.com. Put in financial brokerage reports in the subject line, and I'll have several reports going out to you. This is another one, all the verbiage around planting seeds. Uh, so a couple words I want to focus on this one. Uh, first of all, never too busy to see if I can be a resource. right? You have probably, most of the people I assume um, on this call have um, uh, reached a point where not everyone fits your practice anymore, right? You're a little bit more selective these days. Well, great. So you always want to be in a qualifying mode. You're always, always, always in a qualifying mode around referrals. You never want to assume someone is a perfect match for your business. Someone brings a referral up to you, you know, your, your client mentions in a meeting and say, wait, let's talk about your friend George. Let's, you know, let's see if it makes sense for me to contact him. You know, my practice is geared towards certain types of individuals, and we want to make sure it's a good match for him, for me. And so you qualify, always in a qualifying mode. Now, if, if you don't care, if you're new in this business or whatever, or you just have a, a mission to serve everybody, then take the, the words to see out of that. Uh, never too busy to help. Uh, resource. I found resource is a great word. When you're in a prospecting mode, when you're in a mode of calling new prospective clients, Present yourself as a resource. I would love to present myself as a resource to you. Or maybe even use the words additional resource. I would like to present myself as an additional resource to you. I found that the word resource is soft but proactive. Right? We're, I mean, we're being proactive, but we're, we're in a soft way. Uh, we're not going in there, storming in there, looking to replace their advisor. You know, even if they don't like their advisors, people still sometimes feel intimidated by that. And, and, and so it's just, you know, add on to, add on to what is already there. And small business owners love the word resource. It's a great word to use. Think, think in terms of that. I've gotten a few emails from me and you guys already. I've, I've seen uh, looking for reports, so I'm happy to send them out. We'll get them out to you soon. Um, now, two of the main reasons why people don't give referrals is they're concerned about confidentiality in the referral process. And they don't know how you would handle it. They don't know. You never talked about what it would look like if they thought of somebody. And, and maybe you didn't meet them from a referral. So you know, they didn't experience it that way. And so it's an unknown, right? It's an unknown. And what we want to do is, and because it's an unknown, it's a risk. And what we want to do is remove the risk that the people sometimes feel around giving referrals. And one of the best ways to do this is just educating, just telling them a little bit. So it goes something like this. And again, the verbiage is in that report. One of the reports I told you I could send to you. So it goes a little bit like this. You know, uh, and, and you can do this in person. You can do this over the phone. You know, George, before we're done today, the one thing I just want to run by you quickly, many of my clients like to introduce me and the work I do to other people they care about. And, 
you know, I just thought if that opportunity ever presented itself to you, it would be good for you to have a sense of how I handle it, what it would look like, so, so you'd feel comfortable. Uh, first of all, the work we do is completely confidential. They're, they're never going to learn about your financial situation from me, and, and vice versa. Even with family members, we're very, very careful not to cross that line. And we also handle these sorts of things with, with, with great care. Um, you know, I don't like to call people from out of the blue and make them wonder, you know, why did George give my name out? Nobody likes to get that kind of phone call anymore. I like to work through introductions where my the people I'm calling or emailing, they have a sense of who I am. They know why their, their friend recommended they talk to me, and they're open to at least a, a brief conversation about it. Uh, I've had many clients come to me first and say, Bill, there's somebody I think you can help, and then we talk about it, and we craft an introduction that's, that's very safe that everyone feels comfortable with. How's that sound? George says, that sounds fine. Now, I haven't really asked for referrals, but I've promoted the possibility of referrals, and I've done it by educating my client on, on, on how I handle them, what it, what it looks like. Doesn't it make sense that all of your clients, or at least all of your A clients, knows exactly what, um, how you would handle it, right? So, that doesn't, so it's not an unknown anymore? I, I wonder how many referrals you're not getting because you're, you've never really talked to your clients about how you'd handle it, what the introduction would look like. You know, and the fact that you can't afford to hurt your relationship with them by, by being aggressive and hurting their relationship with other people. You build your script around confidentiality and handle with care. And like I said, if you want to get that script, just uh, BillCatesReferralCoach.com, subject line, put financial brokerage, and we'll send several reports to you. <clears throat> All right, so let's keep going. Here's something an advisor sent to me a year ago. He just had this made at a trophy shop. It sits on his credenza in his office. Some of you have heard this verbiage before. It's all part of building that culture, just letting people know that this is, this is the way people want to meet you, people feel more comfortable meeting you through a referral. Uh, here's a great simple little thing you can do on your outgoing voicemail, you know, after you leave the little statement about not leaving trades on your voicemail. You know, please leave a message at the tone, and if you refer to us, please let us know who we need to thank. Or you could say, if you were, you know, please let, leave a message at the tone, or if you were introduced to us, please let us know who we need to thank. Now everyone who gets your outgoing voicemail knows that you're getting referrals. Right? People give you referrals. You say thank you for referrals. And it's just, again, part of the whole culture. This is a little uh, technique or tip I got from uh, Brenda Blisk, who was at one of my boot camps and did a coach follow-up coaching program. She, she liked the idea of planting seeds. She didn't want to forget about it, so she got some three-by-five cards. She um, wrote different ways to you know, promote referrals on the three by five cards. They sit on her desk. She's got two associates. They sit on their desk as well. And, um, you know, she's on the phone with a client. She's talking with the client. She sees the cards and reminds her, you know, plant, plant seeds, promote referrals. Do I want to do it with this particular client? If so, which methodology will I use? Now, does she plant seeds with every client, every phone call, every time? No, of course, she's not obnoxious. She picks in her spots, but she doesn't ever forget. And sometimes that's half the battle, isn't it? Just having a little prop, a little tool, a little reminder system to make sure you don't forget to, to do this, at least until it becomes a habit. So one way to promote, one way to be proactive for referrals is, is promote referrals. Now I want to get into um, asking for referrals. And, and Justin, you know, if there's a question that comes from. I don't think I've seen any, but if they do, just just stop me. Um, now I want to talk to. Um, a little bit about uh, asking for referrals, and as we get into talking about asking for referrals, first thing we need to address is why don't advisors ask for referrals, right? What's going on there? What's part of their belief system that they don't ask? And I'll tell you, I've been teaching this for 17 years, and without question, the main reason why advisors don't ask for referrals is, is out of fear. It's, it's based in fear. And, you know, the fears look different for different advisors. Um, sometimes they're afraid they're going to hurt the relationship. They don't want to come across pushy. They don't want to make, make their clients feel uncomfortable, and, and I, I, I agree with that. I don't want to do that either. And the problem is they don't. They, they you know they are too far on the other side. They don't do anything. The good news is there is a methodology to do it without without pushing. Uh, some clients don't want to look like, or some advisors don't want to look like they're begging. Right? You don't want to look hat in hand. You don't want to look needy. You know, successful people do business with successful people, right? So you want to look successful and come across successful. I'm all for that. So the, the key is having the right, the right process, and I'm going to give that to you in just a minute. And this process will allow you to get through the fears. 
if you're willing to get through the fears, if you're willing to let go of the fears, uh, fear of hearing no, fear of rejection, this stops a lot of advisors. You know you have a great relationship with your client, they're happy, they're loyal, but you just you don't want to hear them say, no, I don't want to give you referrals. Stops a lot of people in their, in their shoes. And now, first of all, if you've got a client that's been with you for a few years, especially if they've been with you from before 08 until now, and they've been through goods, and they've been through bads, and they've been through uh, goods again, they've been through volatile, and they're still with you, and they're not with you out of inertia, then, uh, and hopefully none of your clients are with you out of inertia, uh, then, you know, if they don't want to give you referrals, it has nothing to do with you. You just, you just can't take this personally, really. You know. Look, here's the deal. You can ask for referrals and, and get them. You can ask for referrals and not get them, but, um, uh, you know, neither is, is success or failure. Failure is not asking for referrals and not getting them. You can't control if they're going to give you referrals. You just have a good conversation, and some people will do it, and some people won't, and I'll teach you how to back out in a minute. Um, you know, when I do a live program, I did one yesterday, uh, I always do a hand raising, and I say, raise your hand, please, if you've ever asked a client for referrals, and they actually gave you referrals when you asked, and invariably, almost every single hand goes up. We know that we can ask and get them. And then I'll say, you know, raise your hand if you've ever had a client, if you've asked a client for referrals, and they didn't give you referrals when you asked, but that same client gave you referrals later when, when they were ready. And almost every hand goes up there. I said, so you can do that, right? You can ask, not get them, but they'll do it later, and they go, yeah. Raise your hand if you've ever had a client fire you because you asked them for referrals. Now, I've, like I said, I've been doing 17 years. I've spoken to well over 65, 70,000 people, and um, I've had four hands go up, <laughs> right? And usually there are mitigating cir circumstances. Somebody was being very aggressive early in their career. So here's what's going to happen when you ask for referrals. Some people give them to you when you ask. We know that can happen. Some people do it later. We know that that can happen. And some people will never do it. You've got some clients that you can run into a burning building and save their children and wouldn't give you referrals. But they're not going to fire you. You're not going to lose them as a client. They're not going to think ill of you. The worst case scenario is they don't want to do it, and you back off, and that's done but you know you've promoted referrals for down the road. I love this quote from Bill Cosby. He says, in order to succeed, your, your desire for success must be greater than your fear of failure. All right, so how bad do you want to build a thriving referral-based business? If you want it bad enough, you'll do what it takes. If you don't want it bad enough, you won't do what it takes, right? You'll, you'll, you've made friends with your fear uh, around referrals, and, and, and what you've got to do is you've got to let go of that friend, you know, it, which is really an enemy. You've got to let go of that fear. And, and start using the VIPS method for asking for referrals. And this will allow you to come across not needy, not pushy, come from a place of strength, but soft enough and proactive enough. So think of the referrals you get as the VIPs of your business. And um, that way you'll kind of remember this one. And the V stands for value discussion. So what we want to do here is we want to check in with our clients. We want to make sure the relationship is where it needs to be. So you say something like this. You know, George, let's, let's put the market aside for a minute. Let's put the economy aside for a minute. Let's talk about something we can control, which is our communication, our relationship. Anything not working? Any, anything I, has dropped through the cracks that I should be aware of? Uh, now, 99% of the time, your client's going to say, no, no, things are good. We, 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 we like working with you. But every now and then, you're going to find a client's got a little complaint, a little something they haven't brought up. And the only way you're going to find it out is if you bring it up. Uh, I've been teaching this for so long. I've had many, many, many advisors you know, love the value discussion. They, they make their relationships with their clients stronger. Every now and then they detect a little problem. I was talking to a guy just the other day. He was doing the value discussions, found a client, been with him for five years. She confessed she didn't know how to really read the statements properly. And so he cleaned that up. And if there's a gap between where they are and where they want to be with you, and that gap is where they're a candidate to move their business somewhere else. You've got to know what that gap is, and you've got to fill that gap. And to do that, you ask them questions. And this isn't a um, this isn't a value telling. We don't go in there and say, "Hey, we did this, and we covered this, and we handled this, and we did this pretty good stuff," huh? No. You want it to come from them. You want it to be a discussion, open-ended questions. Now, you could suggest, you could say, "Hey, you know, we we set that 529 up for you last time, and yeah, you feel a little bit better now and that we got some money flowing into that, and you're going to be able to fund your children's education." Oh yeah, I feel much better. Oh good. So you can suggest some things, but um, it's it's uh, mostly going to come from them. It's also not a setup. Have you found value in the work we're doing? Yeah, great. Who do you know? That's the old methodology. That's old school. We don't want to do that, right? We want to have a conversation to get in touch with the value, 
Even if you never ask for referrals, please have the value discussions. Check in with your clients more often. You will see the difference it makes in your relationships, and sometimes you'll get referrals without even asking. I treat the request with importance. Why do we treat the request for referrals with importance? Well, because we believe in the work we do. It comes from that place of believing in the work that we do. All right, so how do we treat it with importance? A couple ways. I told you earlier about never forgetting. All right, here's a way to make sure you never forget. Every meeting you ever work from, work from an agenda. Every meeting, any business meeting you ever go to should always work from an agenda. People appreciate when you work from an agenda. They like it. They like the forethought you put into it, the organization to it. It, it reigns in those clients that talk a little too much. It, it's a more controlled appointment. Um, I mean, you can be flexible, obviously, but uh, what's going to happen is uh, you're going to manage your time a little better, better so you're going to have more time for this conversation. And then on your agenda are the words value discussion or value check-in. Um, and don't put referrals, don't put introductions, just put value check-in or relationship check-in or communication review if you want. Uh, and, and, and then you'll do it because it's on the agenda. And you'll manage your appointment appropriately to, to get to that point. Um, again, you may not ask for referrals, but at least you'll have the value discussion and the value check-in. So that's one way to treat it with importance. Another way to treat it with importance, quite simply, are the, to use the words, I have an important question to ask you. George, I'm glad to see the value in the work we've been doing you know, through the last several years, and, and I'm glad our relationship is on solid footing. And because of that, I have an important question to ask you. Right? Now we're coming from a place of strength. We're not begging. It's not, hey, I'm trying to build my business and I can really use your help. No. It's value discussion. Treat it with importance. They know the value. You know the value. I have an important question to ask you. It's simple as that. That takes the begging away. Now, we want to take the push away. So that's what the P, permission to brainstorm, getting buy-in essentially to have this conversation. That's what this does. So we're, we're not, you know, we're, we know that not everyone likes to give referrals, particularly related to financial issues. So we've got to be a little softer here. The truth is I'm looking for a yes or a no. I'm looking for clients willing to have this conversation. I'm looking for clients who don't want to have this conversation. And then we go accordingly. The ones who don't want to have it, we back off. The ones who do, well, we get some referrals. The good news is you don't need all your clients to give you referrals when you ask. You just need maybe a little bit more than what you're getting right now. And that means being a little more proactive than where you are right now. Now, the word brainstorm to me means, you know, collaborate together without pressure, right? We're figuring it out without pressure. We're just brainstorming here, George. Let me, let me run a couple ideas by you. And that's where the suggest names and categories comes into play where you come prepared to have this conversation. Right, so let me give you an idea of, of, of coming prepared makes all the difference in the world, by the way. You know, the classic mistake, you've probably made it, I know I've made it. Uh, you, you say to a client, hey, you know, who else do you know should know about the work I do? And the client draws a blank and then the conversation fizzles and that's the end of it. It doesn't usually feel so good. So come prepared. Let the client know you've come prepared. So it goes something like this. You know, you have the value discussion. George, let's put the economy aside for a minute. Let's put the market aside for a minute. Let's talk about something we can control, which is our communication, our relationship. So you talk about that a little bit. And you say, you know, it sounds like i got a happy client. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, absolutely. Great. Well, I, I brought this up because I have an important question to ask you, and I want to make sure we were on solid footing before I even brought it up. I was hoping we could do a little brainstorm and put our heads together and see if we can identify some people that you think should at least be aware of the important work I do. In fact, George, I, you know, I thought of a couple people you've mentioned in the past. Um, I think I can be a pretty good resource for them. Can I run it by you just to see what you think? And what's George going to say? Well, all right, who do you got in mind? I mean, out of curiosity, he's going to want to know who I'm thinking about. So let your client know you come prepared. Now, it could be a list of money in motion questions. You serve people well who have money in motion, right? So you could say, George, you know, I've, I've identified some, some categories of people that we do some important work for, and I was just hoping I could run the categories by and see if it triggers any thinking, see if you think of some money and say, yeah, they should probably know about what you do. Can we try that for a few minutes? And they're going, well, okay, well, you know, what do you got in mind? Now, you know, what's the worst thing they could say? First of all, it's a client you're on, that likes you. You're on solid footing, right? Are they going to say, you know, get out of my office? No. Now, they might say, look, I don't, I don't do this sort of thing. I don't, I don't like the referral thing. You know, 
sorry, but I just don't go there. And you say, well, that's fine, and I'll teach you how to back off in a second. That's the worst thing that's going to happen. And you know, the best thing that happens, I guess, is that they give you some referrals. The second best thing is it promotes the possibility for referrals later, and you probably all experience that, where the client, you know, comes next time, comes to a review meeting, say, hey, I think I got somebody for you, and they actually feel good about it, right? So that's the VIPS method. It's it's really very simple. It's not about being slick. It's not about being tricky. We're not trying to manipulate or fool anybody here. It's coming from a place of sincerity. You know, have you found value in the work we're doing? Yeah, great. Well, you know, who else can we bring this important work to? It's really you're coming from a place of service to others. And when you come from a place of service to others, you're always on safe ground here. You're not going to be hurting relationships, uh, and and you're going to be getting more referrals than if you weren't asking at all. Now, hey, um, I want to tell you about a little little hey, special I got here for you. Yeah, go. Hey, it's Justin here. Um, yeah, Justin, please. Yeah, I know you wanted some questions throughout as well. You know, what if yes, you please. did, I know you've touched on this, what if you specifically get that, no, I don't, I don't really have anyone, no one comes to mind, what is your specific action uh, that they take? Well, first of all, by coming prepared, by saying, hey, I've got a couple ideas I want to run by you, or I've identified a couple people in the, ch in the Chamber of Commerce, I just want to run by, see if you feel comfortable introducing them. If you come prepared with individuals, or if you say, hey, you know, Justin, I was thinking about your uncle Ernie. Uh, and you've mentioned him a couple of times. I just looked at his website. He's doing pretty well. You know, good chance I could I could be a pretty good resource for him. How do you feel about introducing me? If you come prepared like that, then you're not going to get that I don't know anybody. Right? We're going to take the I don't know anybody kind of off the table. Uh, if you don't do that, then you can get the I don't know anybody or let me think about it and get back to you. And you know, it, it kind of depends. If if someone says, you know, can we brainstorm a little bit and say, well, I'm not sure, I you know, I know anybody. I say, well, I mean, we're just brainstorming here. I've got a few ideas I'd like to run by. It would be okay. Well, yeah, okay. See, again, if you've come prepared, then you've got some place to go. But let's say you haven't come prepared. You haven't really thought about who else, right? Well, you're almost dead in the water. Um, someone says, I don't know anybody, and 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 you say, well. When you tell me you don't know you know anybody you feel comfortable introducing me to, you don't know anybody you think should know about what I do, just help me understand a little bit. What we're trying to do with objections is we're trying to is explore a little bit and get a handle on on, on what they mean by that objection. And um, and and usually we're gonna have to back off. Most of the time when people say I don't know anybody or uh, let me think about it and get back to you, sometimes they will think about it and get back to you. It de it definitely happens. But more often than not, what they're really doing is they're giving you a, a no disguised as a maybe, right? They're giving these little fuzzy phrases that we get. And uh, so what I like to do is explore, try to learn about them a little bit, see, see if I can understand their perspective. And most of the time, you know, we have to back off and, and perhaps live to ask a, another time. Uh, a couple more things on objections in a second. I just want to get through the slides so we can get to the objections. Um, we, you know, we put a kit together for you guys uh, that's got the scripts book. It's got all the scripts of asking for referrals and handling all the objections and even introductions, how to get introduced via email. It's a uh, it's total of, I think, 12 hours of, of audio uh, on CDs and, um, you know, introductions journal, which will help you get introduced to people and, and just all kinds of great tools there. Uh, and we're, we're giving a $100 discount for being part of financial brokerage or affiliated in any way, even if you're just friends. Uh, and so if you go to referralcoachstore.com, first thing you'll see there is the success kit. And then you just use the special code FBS, or FB, sorry, FB save $100. FB save $100. And uh, you'll save 100 bucks off of that. So let's keep going. Let's talk a little bit about objections. Um, what we want to do with the objections is we want to be curious. As I mentioned, we want to try to understand the objection just a little bit. Uh, I call it the Colombo School of Sales, right? We're just trying to be a little curious. And I'm going to go through the steps here. Uh, another report that I will send you, because we only have a limited time here, is uh, it's, it's OK to hear no is the name of the report. It's OK to hear no. And what it will do is it will go through this whole process with you and, um, and give you a couple of sample scripts of um, you know, if you get an objection, how, how do you explore the objection? How do you get to know a little more about the objection? How do you understand the objection? Now, sometimes in understanding their perspective, so for instance, some people are concerned that by referring people to you, you'll have less time for them. 
Now, we know that's not true. In fact, the people that give us referrals, we run faster, jump higher for. But, uh, you know, maybe they have a mistaken perception. And so we can change that perception once we understand it, and then, then they're open to it. They go, okay, that makes sense, sure. Uh, or maybe they don't realize that they can talk to their friend first. Maybe they, their only experience of referrals is giving names and numbers and somebody going aggressively after them. So sometimes we can reframe their thinking, uh, and the report and the scripts book will go through that. Uh, but my rule of thumb is this. If, if you ask for referrals and they don't want to give you referrals, uh, you explore a little bit, but in the exploration, it's clear they don't want to do it. They give you a new objection or they repeat the same objection. Now you've got to back off, right? You don't want to hurt the relationship. You don't want to push. You back off. So um, what I want to make sure we get to in this call is just how to back off. And if you want to go deeper you know, in the objections, just make sure you send the, uh, that email to me, BillCatesRefferralCoach.com, financial brokerage re reports in the uh, subject line. I'll get those off to you. Uh, and, of course, in the scripts book in that, in that uh, kit we have, just all of these are, are totally handled. So I call this the emergency exit. Some people call it the graceful exit. I call it the emergency exit because I like to have a little fun with it. And all you got to do, if someone doesn't want to give you referrals, you say, Justin, that's fine. Look, the next time you identify someone you think should know about the work I do, don't keep me a secret. Make sense? Yeah, makes sense. Or, George, look, I just wanted you to be a... Uh, ones you know that I'm never too busy to see if I can you know, be a service to others you care about. Fair enough, fair enough. And then you're done. You ask with confidence. If they don't want to go there, you explore a little bit. If you have to, you back off with confidence. It's really as simple as that. Right. Now, to avoid referral objections, and this is a great strategy. Some of you are quite adept at this already. Uh, just don't ask for referrals. I mean, it pretty much works every time. <laughs> so. Um, Getting referrals without begging, without pushing. There is a way to be proactive. You can promote referrals. You can plant seeds. You can work on your referability. Uh, the value, minimum behavior, value discussions, plant the seed. Value discussions, plant the seed. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, Justin and folks at, at, at FB will be communicating with you as to when we're having our follow-up, uh, you know, turn referrals. We're doing one a quarter for you guys. Uh, we're going to take it from here. And then we say, okay, now you got a referral. Now what do you do? You know, how do you turn that into an into an appointment? Into a into a into an, how do you turn a referral into an introduction? And how do you turn the introduction into appointment? Justin, I know we got just a couple minutes left. Um, any any uh, any questions that, that we haven't answered yet? Um, at the time, I'm not showing any. Um, we can. Uh, I'll, I'll keep an eye out for it here uh, for a moment as we pause, but. Uh, I just wanted to reaffirm to all of our listeners, we've, we've got those resources that you spoke about, and we always have a way uh, for our agents to get that, and uh, they can always give us a call um, at 1-800-397-9999 here at Financial Brokerage, and I'll give that number one last time before we go. Um, at this time, I'm not showing any. I think it was uh, extremely well done and uh, you know, really laid out really, really well. So uh, obviously you've been doing this a long time, but that was just a great presentation. Thanks so much, Bill, uh, for that today. My pleasure. So it. I think you must have nailed it because uh, no no questions are popping up. <laughs> so all right, I don't think they're all sleeping. I think they were well in tune. So <laughs> good. So with that, uh, I'll thank you once again, Bill, for doing that. On behalf of all of us here, thanks to all the webinar participants today. And if you have any questions concerning this webinar. Please feel free to contact us at Financial Brokerage. The number is 1-800-397-9999. The eSummit will continue next week, Tuesday, October 11th. Uh, start the week with uh, Bring Your Business Online with Kevin Kosleka here at Financial Brokerage of 10.30 a.m. That's Central Time, and there's still time to register. Uh, for those of you who have yet to do so, you can do that by uh, going to our website and uh, using the website Carousel. Thanks again. Have a productive day.